So, let's begin this tutorial series by learning about the interface of UE4. First of all, there is the launcher, which you can see here. It will default you to show you the Learn tab, which has lots of documentation uh, you can find and some example uh, games and projects uh, made by the UE4 devs so that you can uh, learn uh, here as well documentation videos they have lots of tutorials which I would recommend watching uh, wiki and they have all of these uh, tutorial pages here as well there's also news which uh, is just uh, it's like a it's like a blog sort of thing so it just shows you the most important stuff so when they have uh, when they po have podcasts or they release content it'll, it'll tell you here and the Twitch live streams and the video tutorials are all here. You can see that there. There's also the marketplace, which is uh, you can buy and there's there's that are free, but most of them are paid for. You can buy and download uh, various pieces of content. Uh, so they're all organized. So there's weapons and props. So you can see rocks and clouds and a lot of them are rocks. And there's also lots of weapons and lots of different things you can get here. Uh, so it's very useful if you want to get some assets quickly but of course you can also use the assets that come with Unreal Engine 4. Then you have a library and you can see I've been working on a few projects here just a few. Uh, but to start off the tutorial we will launch a new uh, we'll create a new game. Now I'm using the preview version of 4.7 which is the newest version you can get. It's not a full release version yet so you can't so if something goes wrong it's, it's expected that things will go wrong uh, basically anyway, so we'll go to new project and you can see uh, you can see this is the new project creation sort of tab you can either create it in blueprint or C++ all this will do it will just uh, it will just change it between being so if, if you choose one of these default uh, like templates to start off with then if you're in Blueprint, it will create it in Blueprint, which is Unreal Engine 4's visual scripting system. Or C++, and it will do it in C++ code. But I'm really going to do it in Blueprint because it's the easiest to learn, and it's uh, but you can do most of the things in it anyway. Now, in the next part here, you can see the uh, default settings. So, uh, do you want it to be for like high-end or low-end sort of graphics? really high quality or low quality sort of graphics and you want starter content or no starter content. Starter content is a big bunch of of assets you can start off with uh, just to start playing around and learning and there's lots of textures and materials in there uh, and it's very useful. Then you also choose the location of course so where you want it to be and what you want it to be called. We will call this tutorial series and then you just click on create project to create the new project. And now because I'm starting off with starter content, it will take a little while long to load than if it was blank. But uh, it won't take too long. Okay, here it is. This is Unreal Engine 4. So you can see uh, that the layout is very by default, it is it's it's split up into lots of different tabs, which contain different data in it. So the first one I want to show you is the modes tab right here. So this what this has it has the different modes and it has the different subclasses of those modes you could call them. So in the placing mode, we have basic sort of things. So cameras, player starts, so where the player will spawn, point lights, box trigger, all you can see. You can look at it, and there's also you can hover, you can click on this to see documentation. That just opened up on my second screen. Uh, there's also lights, uh, uh, visual things you can place, BSPs, which are think of them like modular pieces of mesh. So if I, so kind of like Minecraft. So if I place the box down, then I place a cone on top of it. It will combine them into one mesh, and you can put materials on different faces, and you can you can customize it. It's it's very good for quickly building out a base sort of level. And you can also export what you create um, into an FBX file and edit it in an actual proper editing software. You have volumes, which are BSPs that have been turned in, into 
things that do different things. So you can create a BSP shape and then you can turn it into a volume. So these things, audio volume, so that will have different audio settings, blocking, stop you from moving through it, camera blocking, stop the camera from moving through it. So you can look through it, click on the documentation again if you want to find out what they are. Uh, we'll go over a lot of it in uh, further tutorials to come. And there's all classes, which not only contains all the Unreal Engine 4 default classes, but it contains all the classes that you've created yourself. So any blueprints you create are in here. Uh, yeah, it's it's got everything. But there's also, of course, the content browser for the things you create. Then there's the paint tab. So this is for painting uh, vertices on uh, on meshes. So you can so if you create a material in Unreal Engine 4 that uh, that puts like rocks on a certain area, and then you can fade it into moss, then you can you can use blend blend weights or uh, vertex colors to do that. Landscape mode. So this allows you to create a landscape or a terrain. You know, so you can you can raise things up. You can, yep. Foliage. So this allows you to paint meshes onto terrain meshes, BSPs, or, and translucent things. So you can paint onto anything. Uh, it's very powerful, and it's it especially in the new version 4.7. It uses it uses way less. Um, power than if you hand place them yourself. Then you have geometry editing. So this is geometry editing. So this is to edit BSPs that you place in the level. Then we have the content browser here. So this is where everything that you create, um, like blueprints and audio that you import and meshes, everything will be here. And you can see because because we started off with the starter content, we have a starter content folder which contains all of the uh, all of the assets that come in the starter content. Then up here we have the toolbar. So this contains various uh, quick buttons that you want to press. So like save, obviously saves it. Content, this opens the content browser which we've already got open so you don't need to look at that. Marketplace, obviously opens the marketplace. Settings, this contains a lot of settings. It doesn't contain anywhere near all the settings. But it contains some uh, very useful quick settings. And uh, then we have blueprints. So this is just level blueprint. Then you have project settings, and you can create new blueprints. You can open a blueprint. Uh, mostly, you won't use that. You'll use the content browser to open blueprints, uh, but you might want to use that for opening the level blueprint and such. Matinee. This is Unreal Engine 4's built-in uh, scene animation. I would say so. You can make uh, you can make cutscenes and such in um in Matinee for Unreal Engine 4. You can also create other things, you can just be animations that you play throughout the level, it doesn't have to control the camera, or it can just control the camera, it's up to you, you can do anything you want with it. Uh, then they have build, so this is for packaging, oh, packaging, this is for, uh, so like if you have static lighting, then um, click on build, um, then it will build the lighting and it will update it, uh, or it, it builds everything. Um, you can also change, uh, control the, uh, like the lighting quality, and info, everything. Play, this obviously plays it. Uh, it. Depends on, you can select what type of play. So the selected vo viewport means it will play as if you're playing the game, but in the, in this viewport port here. Mobile preview pl makes it play as if you're running on a mobile device. So it will uh, only allow the shaders that would work on mobile to work. New editor window just brings up a new window with the game. VR preview, which obviously I don't have because I don't have any VR tools. Obviously allows you to play with VR. Standalone game launches the game. It packages the game and launches it. And then simulate. It, it plays the world. So, you know, fire, particles, and and AI, they'll all work. But your player won't be spawned. You'll just be a camera that you can fl fly around as. Then you can also spawn the player at the player start or the current camera location. Number of players. So you can test out multiplayer and such. And then there's advanced settings as well. And launching, uh, it packages the game and launches it. So you can see there's the settings there. Then we have the scene outliner or hierarchy. You can call it whatever you want. This has, this is the text view of everything that's in your scene. So you see, if I select this chair, it's that chair there. I can also select the this floor, and it will select it in here as well. So you can use either to navigate uh, to select things in the world. And then we have the inspector. This shows all the information that is editable about this thing that you have selected um, that you can edit it, that you can edit in the engine. So uh, if I create a blueprint and I had a variable for the speed of the player, if it was a player blueprint, I had a variable for the speed of the player and I made it editable in the editor, 
then the speed would be here. It'd say, like, I could change the speed so I can make him go 1,000, whatever. But because it's a static mesh, it has the static mesh things. It, it, it shows all the information about that thing you've selected. And then, of course, we have the actual viewport here. So this is your window into the into the game. So this is where you can place things in the game and uh, move things. This is, this is where you create your scene, everything, your level. Uh, so the controls for the viewport is hold right click and you can rotate the camera and then you can use WASD and uh, Q and E to move. Uh, so yep, it's like a, it's like a flying, it's like you're flying around. But the camera doesn't have any collision, so you can go into everything because you're editor, so obviously you don't want to have collision. Uh, and obviously left click selects things. Control clicking uh, adds things to the selection or, de or removes them from the selection. And uh, if you move something, uh, there's the different tools as well. So you can see right here I've got uh, the translation tool, which its shortcut is W if you're not holding down the right click. Uh, then there's rotation, which is the shortcut is uh, E, so if I press E on my keyboard, then I can rotate things. And then there's a scale, which obviously allows me to scale things uh, any way I want. I can use the shortcuts to move it around. And if I've got the uh, selection, the translation, translation tool selected, then if I hold down shift and move it, then the camera will move with the object. So it's very useful. Uh, yeah, it's just very useful sometimes. Then you have the different uh, values for these tools. So this is the quantization that the movement will, so you can see it's moving, it's not moving smoothly. That's because I have quantization enabled on 10 centimeters. I can change that to a higher value. I can make it only move a meter. So there you go. Or I can turn it off and I can move it really smoothly however I want. Uh, it's, it's very useful. The same thing with the rotation, 10 degrees and the scale. And this is the camera speed. So this is the speed that you move around in the world when you hold down right click. So if I put it on 1, it's barely moving. If I put it on 8, then I will move it like supersonic speed. It's You only want to use 8 for massive levels, which are, you may sometimes have. So anyway, that concludes the first tutorial, chapter 1, uh, part 1, of... Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series by Skyblue Studios. Uh, this was a tutorial on the general interface of Unreal Engine 4. Uh, so please join me next time to learn some more about Unreal Engine 4.